Hi folks, are you looking for a new fantasy system with a streamlined rule set that allows for a variety of different settings and genre of games? Then today's review of Fantasy Age 2nd Edition is for you. The folks over at Green Ronin sent us over an advanced copy of Fantasy Age 2nd Edition. So in this review, I'll be covering some basics about the system, what makes it different from 1st Edition, uh, as well as my thoughts from a player perspective and a GM perspective. Fantasy Age started after Green Ronin put out Dragon Age uh, based on the popular video game, and people wanted to use the Age system in other fantasy settings. Because of this, Fantasy Age has a lot of generic and general rules, but that doesn't mean that you're going to have generic characters and adventures. Actually, I feel like it's the opposite. Because there is so much room for personalization and fleshing out details, you have a rule set that lends itself to unique characters. And if you really enjoy the system, the basic rules are the same across all of their age systems, including Modern Age, Blue Rose, and The Expanse. But before I get into the meat of this review. If you're new here, hi, I'm Dawn. This is Roll for Initiative. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any of our weekly videos about tabletop RPGs and our other geeky interests. Okay, let's dive into this book. The way this book is written and laid out, it is very accessible to new players as it explains all of the core concepts of tabletop role-playing games, and at the same time it's still easy to navigate for more experienced players who are looking to kind of just skip straight to the mechanics. This book is broken down into two main sections the player and the GM, and honestly it was a very enjoyable read, very clear and direct, and some great examples of gameplay and character creation, all of that. The artwork in this book is great. It represents a wide variety of different genres of fantasy games with diverse subjects. Great art direction as the style feels very cohesive and there was a decent list of different artists working on it. And honestly, I got a few ideas for characters and encounters just looking at the art, which is fantastic and what I want in artwork in a, a rule book. So what are the mechanics? In Fantasy Age you have three six-sided dice. One should be a different color for your stunt die. I'll get more into the stunt mechanic in a moment. You have nine abilities, accuracy, communication, constitution, dexterity, fighting, intelligence, perception, strength, and willpower. Pretty clear what they do. And unlike in a lot of other systems, instead of having a lot of skills you have points in, you can have an ability focus, which lets you specialize in an area of expertise within that larger ability. For example, you can have a bows focus under accuracy or a hearing focus under perception. So to make a check, you roll the three dice, add them together with your ability and focus, and that's it. The bonuses only go up to a plus four, so it's an easy mechanic where you're doing some math, but nothing super complicated. I think the stunt mechanic is where Fantasy Age really shines. When you roll doubles on the two normal dice, you get stunt points equal to the number on the stunt dice that you can use to do awesome stunts. Second edition adds basic stunts everyone has access to along with class specific stunts, and these stunts allow you to do cool extra things that still make sense in the narrative of the action. It makes for really dynamic combat and action sequences as it adds some variety. The one downside to stunts uh, that I can see is there's a decent amount to choose from and you can't really anticipate when it will happen. So if you are somebody at your table has kind of decision paralysis in the moment, um, you might run into some issues with the stunt mechanic, um, although you could get around that by just kind of having perhaps a default stunt that you go to. Outside of action stunts, there are even social and exploration stunts, which is another place where Fantasy Age really shines. It is very balanced between action, social, and exploration mechanics, so it can support a wide variety of settings, play styles, and genres of games depending on how your table kind of distributes the game over those three pillars. Additionally, I appreciate that the system uses the term action rather than combat. It expands the mechanic for other moments outside of combat that 
have a lot of action, such as a chase. The most in-depth rules are for action encounters, which makes sense as most of these encounters will be done in turns rather than narratively, but there are clear rules for exploration and social encounters. While social encounters may just be purely roleplay, I like that there are clear mechanics if you choose to rely on the dice more for these moments. In action encounters, you can do a major action and minor action, or two minor actions. There are also like free actions, such as speaking and reactions. I like that there is a variety of major and minor actions, not just attack or move. In particular, I like that there's like an all-out attack where you can choose to do more damage but leave your defense vulnerable. There seems to be a really good balance in the mechanics of if an action gives you a significant advantage, there is a drawback to it. Another thing I particularly like in Fantasy Age 2nd Edition is when a character reaches zero hit points, they aren't dead. Instead, they are defeated, and the attacker can choose if the, that character is now dying, helpless, or unconscious. This opens up a lot more options story-wise than zero equals dead, um, as well as there's a coup de grace mechanic you can take against a defeated character um, that has options such as capture, kill, or inflict a scar which is a really cool storytelling mechanic. When it comes to magic, the rules focus on the mechanics and not the metaphysics. This is great as, depending on the setting, there are going to be different reasons and sources of magic. You have 19 different spell talents or arcanas to choose from, like Beast Arcana, Fire Arcana, Healing Arcana, and Illusion Arcana, just to name a couple. And again, the spells are general enough to work in a lot of different kinds of settings, and easy to customize with flavor text. I've always been a fan of systems that use magic points. There's a flexibility in being able to cast different amounts of large and small spells depending on the adventures you're on. Additionally, I really like that if you fail your casting roll, you only lost half the magic points of the spell. Nothing sucks more as a spellcaster than feeling you wasted a spell because of a poor roll, and this evens out that feeling without making magic too powerful. And a new feature in 2nd edition is that you can push a spell and try um, again by spending more magic points. Really cool, especially for those moments where you need your spell to work. It's nice that towards the beginning of the book they have a quick breakdown of the main differences between 1st and 2nd edition. So here are the highlights of differences I haven't already mentioned. They added the Envoy class, which focuses on social and group dynamics. This is a role I felt was missing from the previous version, especially if you enjoy social intrigue games. You can now specialize at first level. This is really great, especially if you have a larger group, as you can differentiate two characters of the same class even more. There are new conditions, and there are added subsystem rules from the Expanse and a horror mechanic. Second edition is not a new rule set. It is taking the first edition rules and compiling a bunch of additions that got added in various compendiums, clarifying some rules, as well as adding just some new fun stuff. Uh, so if you have materials for first edition, you can keep using them in second. You can pick up this, this rule set to augment an existing game, and if you're new to Fantasy Age, I think the second edition book is going to be a great place to jump in. Before we get into the specifics from a player and game master perspective, I want to thank all of our patrons, especially Joan. If you want to support our channel and pick up some cool perks like early videos and monthly maps, you can head over to patreon.com slash rollforinitiative and become a patron today. Okay, so from a player perspective, building a character is pretty straightforward. There are nine clear steps. Nine seems to be a reoccurring number. You create a character concept, determine Determine abilities, choose your ancestry, background, class, pick equipment, calculate defense and speed, pick a name, and finally choose goals and character ties. With ancestry, you guessed it, you're going to have nine to pick from, uh, and they are pretty generic fantasy ancestries. There is a really cool mechanic for mixed ancestries that you can have a combination of any two, both a biological mixed ancestry or someone who's been raised in a different culture, like a goblin who was raised in a family of dwarves. Plus the way that ancestry benefits are determined, you pick two from a list. So that allows for a lot more variety within the same ancestry. You're not going to have two orcs that are exactly the same. When it comes to classes, there are only four. Hold on, don't freak out. These four are mage, warrior, rogue, and envoy. They are pretty broad classes, but you specialize. So you can have two very different warriors, two very different mages. There are over 20 different specializations, and many of them work for 
multiple classes. A rogue or warrior can be a sharpshooter, an envoy or warrior can be a champion, a mage could be an arcane scholar, or a miracle worker, just to name a couple. Character advancement is based on your class, level 1 through 20. There is no multi-classing, so if you don't have a clear idea of where you want your character to go, or someone that likes the flexibility of changing things up and maybe picking up a, class, a level in a different class, you're going to be a bit out of luck with this system. I also really like that part of character creation is creating ties to other player characters. It doesn't need to be complicated, but it helps so much with party cohesion, and I like to see that the system is encouraging the players to collaborate together as early as character creation. All of the basic rules that I mentioned earlier are part of the player section along with a few extra character options, spells, and equipment. And when it comes to equipment, the rules cover a variety of weapons, armor, shields, tools, and various other equipment suitable for a number of different fantasy settings. You have the traditional swords, maces, and bows, but also like black powder weapons and grenades. Again, not a ton of super specific unique weapons, but enough to equip your party for their campaign, and it provides um, a structure that you could then go in and customize. The character sheet located at the end of the book is easy to read and use. It's just two pages or one page front and back. There's not a lot of room, so if you like having detailed backstories written down, you'll probably need to put that in a notebook, but it's enough to keep track of the mechanics of your character. Okay, so from a GM perspective, this might be one of the best system books out there. While a lot of rule books go over how to plan an adventure and run the game from a mechanic perspective, Fantasy Age also talks a lot about the soft skills a GM needs, like how to actually be a GM, not just what you need to do to create and run the adventure. They break the role of the GM down into four parts, planner, host, running, and moderator. Even if you aren't running a game in Fantasy Age, you can use the advice provided in these sections to be a better game master. Planner gives you the tools to set up the game, going over session zero, character creation, and how to figure out with your table the kind of game you want to play. Hosting is all about hosting, making a space that people want to be at. The runner section is the largest and focuses on the mechanic side and actual gameplay side of running the campaign. And then moderator goes over some instances of needing to moderate rules as well as just the players at your table. I also really appreciate the suggestion they include of assistant roles, basically parts of jamming that can be handed off to a player such as hosting or rules assistant. I think that really helps remind the GM that they don't have to shoulder all of the responsibilities of managing the table. Within this section, there's also a couple examples of some reference sheets, both for characters and initiative tracking, that are pretty great, and uh, at the end of the book you can find them to scan and print copies to use. These are small enough you could clip them easily to like a GM screen, but also not quite small enough that I think you're really going to need to worry about getting them lost too easily, and it's just going to have kind of all of that quick reference info that you need. Also within the GM section, you'll find an adversary section with sample foes and monsters, along with instructions on how to adapt and make your own. What's provided covers a wide variety of generic fantasy adversaries, so I think every GM will be able to find something to use. There are also rewards, how to hand out experience points, reputation, and a catalog of magic items and artifacts. There are some optional rules included in here, like the pre previously mentioned horror mechanic, um, and there is also a sample setting and adventure, the Stranger Shores located in Breakwater Bay. It's a small island that has kind of everything you need to start a campaign, including encounters, locations, NPCs, and foes, and you can either run this kind of on its own or plop it into a larger game. Throughout the book, it's clear that these rules are the basic structure of the game, and the GM should feel free to adjust and customize them to fit in their world and game. Okay, so if you're looking for a system with a lot of very specific, crunchy mechanics and a fully fleshed out setting to play in, I don't think Fantasy Age is for you. But if you're looking for a flexible streamlined system that can easily adapt to a wide variety of fantasy games, then I highly suggest uh, pre-ordering or picking up Fantasy Age 2nd Edition when it's available at your local game store. And there's a special at the moment where you can add the PDF to a physical book pre-order for just, I think it's $5, and you get the PDF right away! Okay, so will I be playing Fantasy Age? Yes! I like the flexibility of the system. It's specific enough that I don't see um, many instances of disagreements about the rules, but it still allows for a lot of creativity. 
The mechanics facilitate storytelling with minimal crunch. I do like variety in my games. Like, I like my peanut butter. I don't always want crunchy. And honestly, I'm really excited to create, like, a half-orc and half-elf character, roll doubles, and do some kick-ass stunts. So what about you? Are you an existing fan of Fantasy Age? What do you like about it? And what do you think about Second Edition? Or are you now interested in picking it up? I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time on Roll for Initiative. Bye! covers everything. I did it before the battery ran out. Woo!